Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Commander Corey is in a spaceship trying to contact Cadet Happy, who's in a spacesuit on the surface of Neptune's second moon. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy on Neptune number two. Happy, disregard previous orders. You can break space phone silence. Come in, Happy. Cadet Happy here, Commander. This is Urgent Happy. Gargoth's men have orders to keep you from reaching the scout ship. I know. Well, one of his gang is right behind me now with a blast gun. Better surrender, Happy. There's nothing else you can do. But, Commander, I've got to reach that ship. I'm low on oxygen. Five minutes, all the air will be gone. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Test for Survival. <laughs> hey, Space Patroller, it's getting kind of late and I'm getting kind of hungry. Hey, let's take time out right now for a big bowl full of rice checks. Swell, Captain Tufel. Rice checks. Tops with me. Tops with me, too, Space Patroller. And it'll be tops with you, gang. Tops three ways. For taste, for size, for get up and go. There's one bowl. And here's one for me. Space Patrollers, when you fill up your own bowls with those neat triple toasted shredded rice biscuits... You're getting one spoonful after another of the easiest, tastiest, bite-sized eating ever. Because Rice Checks are tops for taste and size. And tops for get up and go, too. Mornings after you finish off a good, nourishing breakfast with Rice Checks, you'll see what I mean. You'll be right there with the right answers in school and the right scores in sports. If you like whole wheat, try Wheat Checks. It's tops, too. So look for Rice Checks and Wheat Checks in the red and white checkerboard packages with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the Swell's Free Space Patrol trading card inside. Rice checks, wheat checks. <laughs> and now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Test for Survival. For 1,000 Space Patrol cadets, today marks the beginning of an adventure. These 1,000 cadets have been selected to take part in the annual survival test to pit their skill and courage against the rigors and problems of outer space and the simulated opposition of an enemy force. Of all the cadets chosen for these tests, it's safe to say that only one is disappointed with the assignment. That solitary individual is Cadet Happy. Glumly, he sits in Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol headquarters, staring at his special orders. Oh, all the times for this to happen. Oh, bad news, Happy? The worst... I'm on the list for the survival tests. Now I can't go with you to Pluto. Uh, unless uh, unless you could sort of... Uh... No. Uh, I didn't think you would, sir. Well, it's up to me to take my turn, I guess. What kind of assignment did you draw, Happy? A real cream puff deal. And here's what the orders say. Cadet Happy will pilot scout ship T681 to Neptune moon number two, landing in sector D4 at 0800 hours universal star time. Upon landing, the ship will be considered inoperative, including all weapons and spaceophone equipment. Oh, you're to act as though the ship were knocked out of action. Yes, sir. And then it says, you will attempt to reach the communications outpost in sector F9 by 2200 hours without revealing your presence to enemy forces concealed between the two sectors. That sounds interesting. Uh, spaceophone silence will be maintained throughout the entire operation. Enemy forces will be provided with special long-range ray guns that will register hits on the sensitized outer coating of the spacesuit. <laughs> Big deal. That sounds like fun, huh? Fun? It's kid stuff. Here I'll be sneaking around craters playing hide-and-seek with other cadets that are pretending they're the enemy. What's the good of it? Don't get the idea this is just a game, Happy. You'll be testing new equipment. What you and the other cadets learn in this survival test might easily help us save a life someday. Well, I suppose so, Commander, but... Gee, if I could go to Pluto with you, I could have some real excitement. I'm not looking for any big adventure on this trip, Happy. You're not? But if the, if this Steve Hegdorn is as tough as Morton says he is, and if he's part of the Cobra gang... If things go the way I plan, Hegdorn won't have time to get tough. You see, when I walk into Hegdorn's office in Pluto City, I'll be in civilian clothes. He'll assume I'm one of Morton's men coming to make the regular protection payoff. When he accepts the money... I'll take him in for extortion. And maybe get a line on how we can find Gargoth. Right. By then you'll be through with your survival test, and I promise you that you can help get Gargoth and the rest of his Cobra gang. Okay, Commander. Uh, but I still wish I was going with you instead of to this garden party on Neptune's moon. The training command doesn't plan garden parties, Hap. These tests are going on all over the solar system. 
Every detail has been worked out by space patrol officers who have been through the mill. You can be sure they've planted some obstacles to take the cockiness out of anyone who doesn't take the test seriously. Oh, I'll be on the alert, Commander. Good. Obey every order to the letter. And good luck, Happy. Thank you, Commander. And uh, same to you. The Zenith Consultant Service occupies a small suite of offices in the Phobos building in Lowell City on the planet Mars. A curious observer might notice that a peculiar assortment of people pass in and out of the office during the course of a week. But then a consultant service would be expected to welcome various types of people in need of consultation. One would never suspect that the Zenith Consultant Service was a device to hide the operations of a syndicate of criminals, a respectable front for Emil Gargoth, leader of the Cobra Gang. At this moment, Gargoth is consulting with Rex Kralin, who has just arrived from Terra. You're very enterprising, Kralin. But frankly, I don't see how this schedule of Space Patrol survival tests is of any interest to me. I just thought you ought to know that these cadets are likely to pop up anywhere for the next few days. What do I care about a lot of rookies? Let them play their games. But, Mr. Gargoth, there'll be four units crawling all over Neptune Moon Number 2. Moon Number 2? Now, look here at Problem 9. They... They picked an area right near our underground storage station. All the desolate places in the universe, they had to pick this one. Of course, the station is well hidden, but just by chance, they might stumble across it. Yes. And we've got thousands of credits worth of stolen goods there. There might be time to get it off the moon before the space patrol tests begin. I don't have the ships available. What kind of activity is going on in that sector, Kralin? Here's a chart of the area. The cadet will start here at this point. Try to work his way to here. There'll be about 20 men scattered all through here, in the craters, acting as enemy opposition. Oh, I see. They're chasing all over this region, trying to capture that one cadet. That's right. Mm. Actually, they won't have to capture him to put him out of the game. They've got a special ray gun that projects a pinpoint beam. It's harmless, of course, but it, it produces a photochemical effect on the spacesuit. The suits in the test have a thin coating sensitive to those particular rays. All right, all right. All right. If he gets out of the game early, they'll go home. Is that it? Well, yes, those in that particular problem will. Then let's hope a dumb cadet draws that sector. It isn't going to work that way. That assignment goes to Commander Corey's sidekick, Cadet Happy. Oh. Kralin, this is the opportunity I've been waiting for. We'll capture Cadet Happy, and then we can make Corey come to terms. Capture Corey's cadet? But, Mr. Garber, <laughs> that's... <laughs> It'll be easy. <laughs> I'll have a ship drop you off on Neptune's second moon before the cadet gets there. You can grab him before any of the other space patrollers see him. Me? But oh, you're I... the ideal man for the job. You were in the space patrol once, weren't you? Before I got kicked out. Mm -hmm. Here's your chance to get even. Now listen. Here's the way we'll work. Those who are forced to deal with Steve Hegdorn on the planet Pluto regard him as a man dangerous to trifle with. Surrounded by brutal thugs, Hegdorn exacts tribute from law-abiding citizens and from lesser racketeers alike. Too intimidated to report to the space patrol, his victims continue to pay the increasing demands of Hegdorn. Those who live in dread of Steve Hegdorn would be greatly astonished to learn that there is one man in the universe that Hegdorn fears. I'm very sorry, Mr. Gargod. Truly I am. Your being sorry, Hector, doesn't make up for the fact that you're 5,000 credits short. I know. It's that Morton account. I got my men out now trying to locate Morton. He may have left Pluto City. That's your problem. I put you in charge of my affairs on Pluto because I thought you could handle things efficiently. I appreciate that, Mr. Do you Gordon. think I have time to get on the space phone to find out why you can't collect from your clients? There's no place in the Cobra Gang for incompetence, Hector. If you permit Morton to get away with this, others will try it. I'll get the 5000 for Morton, I promise. And get this, Hector. If the Pluto quota is short by as much as one credit next month, you're through. Cobra out. Uh, Oaks. Oaks, come in here. Yes, Mr. Hegdorn. Have you found Morton yet? No, sir, but the boys... I am not interested what the boys think. Find Morton and get that 5,000 credits. There is no place in this organization for incompetence. Now get out. Elsewhere, a small scout ship has just landed in Sector D-4 on Neptune's second moon. Out of the ship steps Cadet Happy in a spacesuit. In his hand, he carries a ray rifle, a harmless training weapon capable only of making a tiny dot on especially sensitized objects. 
As he walks across the craggy surface of the satellite, Happy reports his actions into a compact micro-tape recorder that's part of his spacesuit paraphernalia. Cadet Happy assigned a survival test problem 9, Neptune 2. Orders of procedure have been followed exactly. I landed the scout ship in sector D4 at 0800 hours. It is now 0803. My suit space phone is turned off. I am now carefully proceeding south by southwest towards sector E10. So far, no sightings of enemy units. Oxygen pressure normal. External temperature 203 degrees below zero. Internal suit temperature plus 68. In Pluto City, a studious-looking young man carrying a document case enters the office of Steve Hegdorn. Even Buzz Corey's close associates would have to look twice to recognize the Space Patrol Commander-in-Chief. Not only is he wearing civilian clothes, but he has modified his confident stride and allowed his straight shoulders to assume a scholarly slump. Looking up from his desk, Hegdorn scowls at his visitor in an intimidating manner. Yes, yes, what is it? I'm here representing Mr. Morton. Oh, so you're representing Mr. Morton, huh? You're his lawyer, I suppose. Not exactly. Well, if Morton sent you here under the impression that I'll dicker with you over his uh, fees, he's mistaken. I've got the money here, Mr. Hegdorn. Oh, well, that's different. Let's have it. Well, 5,000 credits, isn't it? That's right. And you can just inform Mr. Morton that he better pay up on time after this. And here's the money. Count it. Uh, one, two... Three, four, five thousand. Right. Now get out. I'd like a receipt. A receipt? Ah, I get it. Morton wants to be sure you gave the money to me, huh? All right. I'll just make it out for services rendered to Harvey Morton. There you are. Thanks. Now, Hegdorn, you're under arrest. Under arrest? What for? Extortion and intimidation. Here's my identification. Ah. So you're Commander Corey. I was expecting you, but not till later. Usually I prefer a more direct approach to criminals, Hegdorn, but you've got your victims so intimidated I had to get evidence on you personally. Come along. Get him up, Corey. Corey, the man behind you with the ray gun is Bull Oaks. He handles my rougher assignments. I advise you to do as he says. Get him up. Short. <coughs> oh. Now, boss, help me. Let go of that gun. Hold him out. Corey's quick as a cat. He nearly broke my arm. If you hadn't slugged him, Mr. Stop babbling, Oaks. What kind of a bodyguard are you when I have to rescue you? How did I know he was going to turn on me? Keep an eye on him. If he tries to get up, slug him. I'm going to space a phone to Cobra and tell him I captured Commander Corey. On Neptune's second moon, Cadet Happy cautiously works his way along the shallow fissure, from time to time reporting his progress and observations into the microtape recorder built into his spacesuit. 0857 hours. The black shadow of the mountain extends across this fissure a hundred yards ahead. When I reach that shadow, I... I've just sighted an enemy scout. He's coming toward me. Apparently he doesn't see me because he's making no effort to keep covered. He'll be an easy target for the ray rifle. It's a shame not to warn him, but rules are rules. Look, cadet, put away that silly ray rifle and get out of that ditch. Your survival test is over. This must be one of those special obstacles Commander Corey warned me about. This fellow may be an officer trying to trick me into breaking space upon silence. I'm telling you, cadet Happy, this isn't a game. Maybe this will prove it to you. Smoking rockets, that was no ray rifle. He's got a real blast gun. That shot chipped off a hunk of rock three feet away. There, cadet. That ought to prove to you I'm not with a space patrol. Your make-believe enemies are five miles away. Now throw that useless ray rifle down and come with me. Well, and if you're wondering what's going to happen to you, well, that's up to the Cobra. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufeld in St. Louis reporting on the twin jet Air Force fighter, the McDonnell Voodoo XF 88A. In a moment, we'll hear from the noted test pilot who flies this plane, Phil Houghton. Speed of the Voodoo is a military secret, but it's plenty fast. Wingspan is 40 feet, length 55, weight 10 tons. And now, Phil Houghton recorded this morning at Lambert Airfield. 
After seeing the voodoo, I guess you know why I like my job. There's one thing about it, though. A test pilot has to stay in good condition, get lots of sleep, and eat good, healthy food. That's why I like rice checks and wheat checks for breakfast. They've got plenty of energy in them, and they really taste swell. I think you'll like them, too. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So do as Phil Houghton, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., and other top test pilots do. Make your cereals rice checks and wheat checks. And now back to our space football adventure, Test for Survival. Emil Gargoth, leader of the criminal syndicate known as the Cobra Gang, has learned that Cadet Happy is taking part in the Space Patrol survival tests on Neptune's second moon. Knowing that the test rules prohibit the use of suit spaceophones, Gargoth sent one of his men, Rex Kralin, to capture Happy. Armed only with a harmless ray rifle, Happy was powerless to defend himself against Kralin's deadly blast gun and submitted to capture. Meantime, on the planet Pluto, Commander Corey has been overpowered by two other members of Gargoth's gang, Steve Hegdorn and Bull Oaks. Right now, Hegdorn is in a private space cruiser, heading sunward from Pluto, with Commander Corey lying on the deck of the control cabin, securely bound. Hegdorn calling Cobra. Hegdorn aboard cruiser P-532 calling Cobra. Hegdorn here, waiting for further instruction. Come in, Cobra. Cobra here. Go ahead. Uh, where do you want me to take Corey? Set a vector toward Mars. I'll give you further instructions later. All right, Mr. Gaga. Have you got yourself covered back on Pluto? Sure. I left Oaks there to destroy all our records. Don't worry, there won't be anything to involve you. See that there isn't. You can depend on me, Mr. Gargot. Incidentally, I got that 5,000 credits more to node. Destroy it. You fool, don't you realize Corey marked it so the space patrol could trace it? Uh, I guess that's right. Oh, incidentally, Corey's acting pretty stubborn. He says he won't tell you a thing. <laughs> oh, he'll talk all right. That's what you think, Gargoth. For your information, Commander, one of my men has captured Cadet Happy. You're lying. Am I? Right now, your cadet is in an underground hideout on Neptune's moon number two. He was captured during the survival test. You'll talk all right, Corey. Or something very unpleasant will happen to Cadet Happy. In the Cobra Gang's underground hideout on Neptune Number 2, Gargoth's agent, Kralin, holds Happy at the point of a blast gun. Both men are still in their spacesuits, but with their face pieces open. So you're one of the Cobra Gang, are you? That's right, cadet. My name's Rex Kralin. Gargoth finds my knowledge of the Space Patrol quite useful. Yeah? How do you know anything about the Space Patrol? I used to belong to the organization. I was dishonorably discharged when I was unable to explain how some of my uh, buddies' belongings were in my possession. A thief. A rotten thief. <laughs> Where did your honesty get you, cadet? You're in a hopeless spot. Me? I'm sitting pretty. Oh, are you? There are 20 space patrollers in this sector of the moon trying to find me. They'll keep searching until they do. And they're armed with harmless ray rifles. I've got a blast gun. Cobra to Kralin. Cobra calling Kralin. Yeah, there's the boss. Now, you stay where you are. Remember, I'm watching you every second. Kralin here. Go ahead, Cobra. Is everything under control there? Perfectly. But how do I get off this moon? Take the cadet and work your way back to scout ship be landed in Sector D-4. And listen, don't let anything happen to him. I want him back here alive. Okay, but suppose he gets tough. Put him to sleep with a cosmic ray gun if you have to. Then carry him to the ship. I want Commander Corey to know the cadet is alive, so we'll do everything to keep him that way. I get it. When Corey finds out we got the cadet, he'll come to terms. He already knows it, Kralin. And what's more, we've got Corey, too. What? Hector got him on Pluto. Corey's on his way to Mars right now in Hegdorn's cruisers. Hey, that's great. Now we got... Hey, hey, come back here. What's the matter? That cadet made a break for the airlock. You blundering fool, go after him. You've got to stop him before he gets to the ship. You aren't so cocky now, are you, Corey? Now that we've got cadet happy. If anything happens to him, Hegdorn, I'll get you and Gargoth. It's the last thing I do. <laughs> The smart thing for you to do is to forget those threats and give Gargoth the information he wants. Cobra to Hegdorn. Cobra calling Hegdorn. Hegdorn here. Go ahead, Cobra. Quick, Hegdorn. What's your position? Near the Neptune orbit. Why? That idiot Kralin let the cadet get away. What? Yes, he's out of the hideout and probably headed for the scout ship. How long will it take you to reach Neptune moon number two? Oh, I'd say about uh, 15 minutes, maybe less. Then change your vector. 
got to make sure the cadet doesn't get to that ship. But, boss, we, we can't land a ship there during those survival tests. Those space patrollers will spot us. No, they won't break space phone silence except in an emergency. And by the time they realize there is an emergency, the cadet will be finished. What do you mean? The cadet won't surrender to Kralin and blast him with a space torpedo. Get away before those men on maneuvers know what happened. Listen to me, Gorgon. If anything happens to you. You happen... listen to me, Corey. You want to save the cadet, do what I tell you. Get on the space phone and order Happy to surrender to Kralin. Understand? All right, Gorgon. Hey, Gorgon. Switch to the space patrol frequency. I'm sure Corey will tell you how. Okay, Mr. Gargod. And watch him. Don't let him try any tricks. Cobra out. All right, Corey. What's the frequency? 672.3 megacycles. Stand up, then. I'll set it. Go ahead. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy. Commander Corey calling Cadet Happy on Neptune number two. Happy, disregard previous orders. You can break space and phone silence. Happy, can you read me? Can it happy here, Commander? This is urgent, Hap. Gargas men have orders to keep you from reaching the scout ship. I know. One of his gang is right behind me with a blast gun. Better surrender. There's nothing else you can do. But, Commander, I've got to reach that ship. I'm low on oxygen. In five minutes, all the air will be gone. Craylon's firing at me. Hit the dirt, Hap. That's enough, Corey. Hey, Dorn, you dirty rat. If my hands weren't tied... Go ahead. Pull... Pull on those ropes. They only get tighter. Go ahead. Pull. You can't break them. So I couldn't break them. Don't reach for that gun. I said don't reach for it. Just lie there and don't cause any trouble. When you get this ship to Neptune number two. With his oxygen supply getting lower with every breath, the dead happy crawls across the rough, barren rocks of Neptune's second moon, trying to keep within the inky black shadows. Steadily, Rex Kralin advances toward him, blast gun in hand. A few hundred yards away, the scout ship rests where Happy landed it many hours before. A few steps more, and Kralin stands over the exhausted cadet. Carefully, Kralin adjusts the power control of his spacesuit transmitter, limiting it to the range of less than 50 feet. I heard what you told the commander. Your oxygen is about gone. You'll never be able to make it to the ship under your own power, so I'm going to have to carry you. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm going to turn your transmitter volume down, just in case. If you're hoping any of your pals on maneuvers are going to come to your rescue, forget it. Even with you on my back, I can make it to the ship in a few minutes. Now, look, cadet, you're about gone. So don't try to give me any trouble when I lift you. Oh, okay. All right, now... Hey, where's that light coming from? A spaceship. A private cruiser. That must be Hector. And he's looking for us. This is a break. I won't have to lug you to the scout ship after all. Look at him come. Hector sure knows how to handle the ship. landing. It's only a few yards to the cruiser. Think you can walk it with a little help? I'll, I'll try. Now, come on, on your feet. <laughs> this is a break. Now we won't have to worry about having to get rid of that scout ship. Well, the hatch is opening. Say, Hegdorn's coming to help me. Hegdorn, can you read me? Hegdorn? Hegdorn, use your space phone. It's okay, there's nobody within five miles of us. That's not Hegdorn. That's right, Kralin. Commander! I'm warning you, Commander, don't come any closer. The cadet gets a charge from this blast gun. Kralin, listen. We've got to get Happy into the ship. He's nearly out of oxygen. The decision is up to you, Commander. Let me get to the cruiser, then you get the cadet to the scout ship. Can't you see there isn't time? And it's just too bad for the cadet. I'll finish you with a blast gun if you take another step. Cadet, cadet, let go of me. Drop that gun, Kralin. I've got a sharp sliver of rock in my glove. How would you like to have it jammed into your spacesuit? Let go of me. Drop the gun, or you'll be in the same fix I am. You haven't the strength left. Give me that gun, Kralin. Ah. All right, I'll get happy to the cruiser. Go on, pick him up. Yeah, sure, okay. I'll get moving. Inside the cruiser, Happy quickly revives. With a fresh oxygen bottle attached to his spacesuit, he helps Commander Corey transfer Kralin and Hegdorn to the scout ship. 
Now, with Happy at the controls, they've just blasted off from Neptune's second moon and are headed for Terra with their two prisoners. Either of them will talk, Happy. We know Gargoth is in Lowell City on Mars. Yeah, the brainograph will clear that up. Yes, but too late. How do you mean, sir? Cobra well, calling Hank on. Cobra to Hank on. Cobra to Kralin. Kralin! Either of you answer immediately. That's what I mean. Gargoth won't wait around long enough to find out what happened to his. Kralin! Hank on! <laughs> I suppose you're listening, Corey. Well, I don't suppose I'll be hearing from Kralin and Hagdorn. So would you please inform them that their services are no longer required? <laughs> Cobra out. Are you going to answer him, sir? Not now. What I have to say to Gargoth, I'll say to his face, and that day will come sooner than he thinks. Yes, sir. Smoke and rockets. What's the matter, huh? I never did get to that communications outpost. I flunked the survival test. Oh, I'm sure you can prove you passed it. I can? How? The best proof in the universe. You're alive. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. How will you have the Space Patrollers out of the bowl with cream and sugar or out of the box for snacks? Well, in case you haven't guessed, I'm talking about rice checks and wheat checks. Tops any way you eat them, any time you eat them. Tops three ways. One for taste, two for size, three for get up and go. Rice checks. Triple golden toasted shredded rice biscuits. Hollow inside so they fill right up with milk or cream and plenty luscious eating. Wheat checks. Good whole wheat. Super rich in action energy. The kind of action energy that made Buzz Corey commander in chief of the Space Patrol. Oh, you'll love wheat checks from the first to the last delicious bite. And remember, gang, checks are made in that modern bite sized design for the easiest, breeziest, tastiest eating ever. So, Space Patrollers, this morning, tomorrow morning, every morning, have yourself a good, nourishing Space Patrol breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks in the red and white checkerboard packages with the full color picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and the neat, free Space Patrol trading card inside. Rice checks, wheat checks, tops for taste. Tops for size. Tops for get up and go. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are trying to escape from a mansion on the planet Venus, where they're held prisoners by Emil Gargoth, leader of the Cobra Gang. Suddenly, Happy moves toward a large cabinet and opens it. Wow, is this a break, Commander? Weapons, ray guns, blasters, paralyzers. Take a couple of ray guns, Happy. Hey, something just made me go to this cabinet. A real strong hunch. No, Hap, take the ray guns. Those are blasters. Put them back. Oh, yes, sir. I... I'm not arguing, sir, but wouldn't the sight of a blaster have more effect on Gargoyle? All right, it doesn't matter. Let's get careful, Happy. You're pointing the gun right at me. Lower your arm. I, I can't. Something's controlling my movements. Happy, lower that gun. I'm trying to. Commander, my finger is squeezing the trigger, and I can't stop it. <laughs> Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Secret of Dr. Borodak, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Baylor Kovach, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program in your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.